Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today, we are going to talk about Venom number 12. <laughs> I know we're going to get back into the comics, we're going to do the Versus stuff coming up. Uh, but I did want to do a you know proper goodbye to this. I did say I would give this book 12 issues. Um, originally, I was going to give it like till the end of my subscription, because remember, I was getting them in the mail. And I think issue 8 or 9 was the last issue I got in the mail. But then they were already into this storyline, which I was like, oh, I'm kind of intrigued to see now that it's focusing on Eddie what kind of story they're going to tell with Eddie and his background and what they're going to change and retcon. And uh, as you know, in my last episode, I'm not a huge fan of what's going on here. I don't hate overall the concepts uh, that Donny Cates has, but some of the execution I'm not a big fan of. And I also, I don't like someone who's like, you know, who has this approach to writing where they go, hey, look, I read all those stories you read. I did my research. I did all that stuff. I understand all that stuff happened, but now I'm going to like take it all away. That to me, it doesn't come across as interesting. It comes across as lazy. And it, it feels, even though it's not intended to, it does feel like a slap in the face to people who have been here for a long time. I'm all for getting new readers in and writing a story that makes it easier and accessible for new readers. But I don't feel like you have to do that at the at the cost of uh, kind of pushing away the long-term fans. Um, and that's just the only gripe I have with the book. The otherwise... The art's been great. Ryan Stegman and then Joshua Kassara, who's on these issues, has been doing great. I actually really like his artwork a lot. Um, so it's a bummer. It's not like I don't want to review. I mean, I'm the Venom vlog. You know, I want to review the Venom books. I went through, uh, we did through most of the Mike Costa stuff when we first started the show. We were getting into the Mike Costa stuff and then the Colin Bunn Venomverse stuff was in the beginning of days of our show, um, you know, just over like a year and a half ago. And so, you know, I want to talk about Venom and on a monthly basis with the new comics. But uh, I also don't like being negative all the time. And I know some of you don't either because I get the most downvotes I get on this show are usually when I review Donny Cates, you know, Venom run. Because I know there are people out there who just love this book so much. They, they just hate that I don't for whatever reason or my opinion pisses them off or something. But it's like, hey, I get it. I appreciate you still watching and even, you know, the downvotes still count as you know interaction with me and it gives me feedback and so everything's useful and helpful so i you know i appreciate anyone just watch the show in general and listening to my opinion even if you don't agree with it um but this one again there's some of the ideas i like like i like the idea of eddie brock having this thing where maybe he hit someone with his car that adds to like the brokenness of eddie um i can appreciate something like that uh but i also don't think because you did that that you have to retcon his sister out of existence um or you have to come up with this thing where the symbiote has been lying to him this whole time and someone recently was like you know at the comic store shop at golden apple he was saying like oh you know it's kind of like hypnosis like when you hypnotize you know someone even when you're you you leave their presence like because i was asking like why when the suit left him and he was you know a cancer patient and he you know he sold the suit off or whatever um why didn't the suit fight for him then if it felt this strongly and wanted him to stay on board um or if you want to say oh well it's because his newfound attachment to eddie comes from his attachment to flash and realizing that you know eddie isn't such a bad guy because he's been with matt gargan and that was like the final straw it's like no i'm literally with a psychopath now and we ate people um so now i want to go to flash thompson and i learned what a hero is and now i want to try to find the hero in eddie and help him find the hero in himself it's like i can appreciate those concepts um, but sometimes the executions aren't as clear and they're not as well told um when it comes to that stuff um so there's, it's one of those ideas where it's like, oh, the suit has rewashed his memories. It's like, okay, well, why didn't it do that to Peter, you know, um, you know, to this scale? Because it was on Peter for a while. I mean, it, Peter didn't even know it was an alien suit for a while. So it could have done a lot of things to Peter, but it didn't. Uh, it just did it to Eddie for whatever reason. It seemed very manipulative and, and out of left field. And it seems very out of character for the symbiote. Um, and especially at times where the symbiote could have done this before to keep Eddie around and it didn't. So why now, you know? And so there's all these things, like if you look more into the idea, it kind of falls apart and unravels. And maybe that's the point is you're not supposed to look that deep into it. But because I do a show about Venom and we've talked about those stories as recently as six months ago, it's fresh in my mind. And it's it's hard for me to get past it because we're re-examining the character. That's the whole point of the show is to examine every avenue of the character that's out there. And we'll get to more of them, more comics coming up, more TV shows, interpretations from cartoons, all that stuff we'll get to. Um, but, uh, but you know, this, it just doesn't feel like it's in line, uh, with that at all. And so for that reason, I'm, you know, it's kind of a bummer. Uh, I, I don't fully appreciate what's being told here. Um, Anne Weying is the mother, which I guess we could have guessed that, but at the same time, I was kind of hoping maybe it was the girl in San Francisco, the homeless lady that Eddie met. Um, 
but I guess it was, you know, before all that, which makes sense from a timeline standpoint. Uh, and then she's like, hey, look, I, I don't have any family. You know, Anne's like, I don't have any family. And we know Eddie's a monster, so I got to give the kid to you. Eddie probably is not going to come back here, so the kid's probably safe with you. But then for some reason, Carl, you know, would hit this kid and abuse him. Um, so, and I never took Carl for that kind of guy. Uh, you know, again, this is all stuff that Donnie Cates is adding. Uh, he's an emotionally, you know, uh, abusive guy. Even in Dark Origin, people might say, oh, he was uh, emotionally abusive to Eddie then. He really wasn't. He uh, Eddie just knew when his dad was lying, and he was his dad was distant from him. The whole thing about Eddie was that he, when he was born, his mother died giving birth to him. His sister verbally, and made it was very outspoken about that being Eddie's fault. His father would say things like, it's not Eddie's fault, stop blaming your brother. And then he would leave the room and Eddie would look sad and she's like, why are you sad? Dad just defended you. And then Eddie goes, no, he didn't. I can tell when dad's lying. And that was Eddie's thing is he could tell when people were lying, like the Watergate scandal. And that's how he ended up getting into journalism. And I and none of that's really been retconned, although with the sister out of the picture, I feel like some of that has now been retconned. So it's just, it's a little sloppy and it's a little like choosy. Like it's like, it's, it's. It's, it feels a little ego driven where it's like Donnie's like Donnie Cates is like, all right, well, these are the things I like and these are the things that I, I don't think are useful. So I'm going to retcon them. And it's like, well, if you don't find use in them, just don't acknowledge them. I think that's the best way so they can still be there for future writers. But he's sewing this like he's, he's closing doors on potential stories. And to me, I've always known that to be a, something bad writers do or lazy writers do. Um, and or egotistical writers do because they're like, oh, I said the thing, I said the definitive thing on this character. Boom, door slammed. Boom, door slammed. And uh, you know what? Uh, one day someone's gonna undo all this stuff, and uh, and it's it. You know, I don't know. I feel like Donny Cates might take it personally. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. He seems like a laid back guy. I mean, I don't like dislike the guy. I when I follow him on Twitter and stuff, he seems like a pretty chill and down to earth and very passionate dude. So it, I have nothing against him personally. I just uh, on this book, I'm just I'm not 100% on board. Uh, but I have read other stuff that he's written, and I like it. So, you know, maybe it's just a Venom thing for me. I don't do a show on Thanos, and I don't do a show on Guardians of the Galaxy, so I enjoy those books a little bit more. Um, but I do do a Ghost Rider show, um, or I might, you know, bring it back soon. So uh, maybe he might have some trouble with me on that one. But he's writing his own Ghost Rider out of continuity now. In con I don't know. It's it's a mess. But either way, <laughs> like, uh, the Venom stuff I'm not really just feeling. And in this issue... I, I kind of am not digging what's going on here. But I will talk about some spoilers here. So if you haven't read this episode, or issue yet, I'm going to give away the digital code. Boom, right there. Go ahead and uh, put that code in. First person to put that code in, go to that website, put the code in, and you get issue 12 of Venom here. Uh, so I want to give that away to one of you guys. So hopefully you enjoy the book, you read it, enjoy it, and tell me what you think in the comments down below. Uh, so now that that code's out of the way, I'm going to talk about some spoilers here. Because in this book, we have Eddie... You know, fighting back against the programming or the, whatever the the engineer is doing to him, the alternate universe, Mr. Fantastic, um, and the suit kind of gets away, and then uh, it it blows up the lab and it captures uh, uh, the engineer. I think that's his name. Is it the engineer? I can't remember. If I'm forgetting already. Uh, but U Ultimate Fantastic Four, Reed Richards. But yeah, he's like tied up, and then Eddie is wounded in the explosion, and the suit, as the suit, uh, and as Venom, it without a host, goes out and it stops Carl from hurting, um, uh, you know, uh, Dylan is the son's name. And we found out in the last issue that Dylan is actually Eddie Brock's son. And Eddie Brock, he kind of like explodes and, you know, there's like an explosion and he's kind of caught in it. And so he's wounded. Um, but then the suit leaves Eddie, no host, runs out and uh, Dylan is being taken away by Carl, you know, Eddie Brock's dad. And we found out in the last issue, Dylan is Eddie Brock's biological son. That, again, I like that aspect. I like it ties into Ann Wang. So she, you know, he's half... You know, he's Anne's child and Eddie's child, and it, it's great. It keeps that continuity going. It keeps the story moving. I always like when Batman got a son. I thought that was a cool storyline with Damien. Luckily, he's still around. Jonathan Kent. I really like that addition to Superman. I feel like that gives characters a chance to grow. And now we have Bendis ruining that uh, and making Jonathan twenty years old now, and then jumping around. Then he'll probably kill Jonathan or make him disappear. The universe will get rewritten again, and everyone will go back to normal and whatever. And that's a that's a real bummer that they're going to do that. But with Eddie Brock, I feel like that's a character you can give him a son or a child, and you can keep that continuity going. He's not up there along with Superman and Batman and all those guys. Um, so it's it's nice. I like seeing character growth, and I like seeing 
some of these guys become parents and stuff. I feel like that's a good evolution for characters. It changes things. It gives you a new opportunity to tell new Venom stories and new Eddie Brock stories is now that he has this tremendous responsibility of a teenage boy, a uh, teenage child, you know, with him and stuff. So it's, it's cool. I like some of these aspects and I, I, you know, but at the same time, the stuff we're losing to gain this is frustrating for me. So when Carl is like, all right, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to, he's about to hit, uh, you know, Dylan again while they're driving in the car, leaving the hospital and the symbiote shows up and breaks Carl's nose, uh, picks up the car and it like threatens him and it's talking and it says, you know, like it's talking like, you know, uh, going into his mind and uh, it kind of has these null like powers now where it creates a, a black and gray spiral, kind of like how uh, black and red was like null spiral. And so he's brainwashing Carl and he goes into his mind and he says, look, uh, I'm here as Eddie, but I'm not Eddie. I'm the suit. And I'm telling you, you cannot have this the kid you cannot have dylan i'm going to leave him with his rightful father and you're going to stay the hell away from him and if i find out you come back to hurt either one of them i'm going to come get you and so he kind of gives you know carl an ultimatum and he says stay out of eddie brock's life and carl's like yeah fine okay um i will and so when carl wakes up he's like out in the middle of nowhere and he's like i'm sorry he's kind of reflecting on his own sins so i hope that comes back i hope we see like some kind of closure with carl down the line maybe a redemption arc for him maybe he realizes what a scumbag he's been and maybe he can find a way to connect with eddie and and um own up to the things that he's done wrong and maybe set a good example for eddie for once uh i think that would be interesting i think that's a great story to tell it's a shame that they can't do that with the sister at you know being there too as an actual character i mean for all we know the the sister is real and you know because what i found out from there's a lot of things from the story you can pick up if you just follow donny cates on um on twitter so if you're not understanding or you have questions He's pretty good about answering them, which is cool. It's, it's cool that he's nice about that. Uh, but he said something about uh, here at the end when the suit drops Carl back off to Eddie. And it's like, all right, you're going to be with your father and both of you are going to be safe because you're not going to have me anymore. Even though the suit knows Carnage is building an army and Null is out there, for some reason the suit still thinks it can go out and do something on its own without Eddie. Um, it feels like it betrayed Eddie so badly that it's walking away. And again, it just feels like very back and forth with a lot of things like it just feels too quick to turn 180 on um it, it's like it's it's just donny kate's going like this needs to happen so this can happen so this can happen and we're just we're not going to wait for things to happen organically we're just going to rush it in 12 issues so we can get to the point because now venom's going to cross over with war of the realms so i understand that's like the business side of you know of com making comics uh but from a writing standpoint it gets a little frustrating for and I'm sorry for all the jump cuts, but as you can tell, my voice, I am losing it. Uh, I talk a lot at work. I have to uh, with my job, and uh, and I and my voice comes and goes, so I apologize. Plus, I have these planes that, for whatever reasons, reason, are just flying overhead back and forth. There's like these two planes just like going back and forth. So I don't know. So there's a lot. So I'm sorry for all the jump cuts. But uh, either way, I mean, the book overall, I, I kind of enjoyed this issue. It wasn't too bad. Um, I, I understand the motivations for everyone. I may not agree with it, and, and I may not really be interested to see where it goes from here but I do understand it it's fine uh, but what you know with this thing at the end where you know Eddie and Dylan get reunited and they realize the suit's gone the suit actually walks out into the streets and shapeshift into Eddie wearing a hoodie and walks off down the street as Eddie it looks like um, and that is a power we didn't know it had before we knew it could camouflage and stuff but we didn't know it could shapeshift like that even though it can turn into clothes like it always did before uh, that makes sense but, uh, but now it looks like Eddie too and stuff. So it's interesting. But apparently this, if you read Donnie Cates' Twitter, he says the reason it did this is because after contact with Null uh, from the first arc, the, the suit is experiencing new abilities, which we talked about, like the wings, not a new ability. Sorry to say, Donnie Cates, uh, that is not a new ability. Uh, some of the other things he did, um, uh, the psychic stuff, like that was not new abilities. Numbing pain, not new abilities. So these are all things that I'm like, uh, I feel like, it's very clear he read these old stories because he acknowledges them and references them. But at the same time, I don't feel like he understands or paid enough attention to some of them to where he realizes the importance of some of those events to the character. And he's just like, oh, I can brush over that or wash over that or I can erase that or retcon that. And that to me is um, is, is sloppy and, and bad and bad writing in my opinion uh not good at not good at doing research and also where, where's the editor on that one um in some regards if, if you're a writer and you, i don't expect every writer to know as much hell i didn't even know this much about venom until i started doing the show again so you know i'm 
obviously everybody gets the benefit of the doubt. I don't expect everyone to be an expert when they jump on a book, but clearly he did a lot of research. But I felt like, again, he probably crammed so much in that he just got the footnotes and the basics of each event, but without thinking of the gravity of what these events had on the characters. And so for that is why I think we ended up with this book, which is overall a good book. I know a lot of you guys are enjoying it, but it just has enough things in it that irk me that I can't fully get on board. So this is my last review of a Donny Cates monthly Venom book, uh, issue 12. This is my last issue. I will review issue 13, 14, and 15 because they cross over into the War of the Realms event, and I will be buying that because I am a fan of Jason Aaron. I like his writing. I like his Ghostwriter stuff, his Thor stuff, um, and uh, I'm curious to see how he ends it all because I think this is the end of all of those years of writing for his uh, comics that he's written, especially Thor. This is kind of the end of his arc, and Venom apparently plays a part in it. So any book that shows up that has Venom in it, I will review that for sure, and if they have digital codes, I'll give those away. Um, and then the 13, issue 13, 14, and 15 of the Venom series, I will get because Yvonne Coelho is drawing them, you know, friend of the show, like watched the show in the beginning, but I, you know, we gave him many shout outs. I loved his stuff with Cullen on Venomverse and uh, uh, Venomized, and uh, Colin Bunn is now gonna write the Venom for three issues. So for up until issue 15, I'll still be reviewing Venom, but only because it ties in with War of Realms and because it's by a different writer and a different artist team. But when it comes back with issue 16, chances are I'm not going to cover it. The free comic book day issue, though, I will cover it. It looks like I might be at Golden Apple um, Comics working a table, handing out the free issue. Um, so I'm talking right now with Golden Apple about it, about promoting the show and promoting the comic for Marvel um, and, uh, you know, and, and going there and handing out the free comic book day issue that has uh, Venom and Spider-Man teaming up in it, uh, setting up the absolute carnage arc. So I'm very curious to see where the story goes in that issue for sure but absolute carnage and all that stuff chances are i'm not going to buy it monthly i'm not going to review it monthly i hope that's okay with you guys i'll give you time to read it you pick up each issue we can talk about it on twitter or social media if you want um but i will probably wait till the trades come out before i buy it and before i cover any more dining kate stuff uh but don't fear because in may we are going to get savage avengers which is a new avengers team with venom on it it's venom conan punisher uh, electra brother voodoo and wolverine and I love that team. What a great team. And Venom's on it. So we will cover that by Jerry Dugan and Mike Diodato Jr. We will cover that series going forward. And that'll be our new monthly Venom content every month. Uh, but we will get to the absolute carnage. I know a lot of you are excited about it. I won't completely ignore it because I'm the Venom show. I want to cover everything. But I'm just going to wait till trade paperback to do it. So I hope you guys are okay with that. But for this issue, I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know down below. And if you got the free copy, let me know what you think of the issue. And if you liked it, I'd love to hear your opinions. Again, no one has to agree with me on this one. These are just my point of views. And I try to back it up with, you know, how I feel and, uh, you know, story structure things and things I've learned in writing and things I've seen in writing that I like. And it's all based on just my point of view. Doesn't mean I'm right at all. It's just me giving a point of view of it. And if you don't agree with it, that's totally cool. I invite conversation down below. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.